Come on, church. Praise him. It's a new year. It's a new year. Give him praise. Give him praise. It's a new year. We're so thankful. We made it another year, church. We're here. We survived. We're here to praise him and to worship him. Powerful song we just sang, amen? Listen to what 2 Corinthians 9 8 says. And God is able. Say God is able. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have all sufficiency in all things. May have an abundance in every good work. God is good, church. He's good in many ways. Amen? In many ways. We're going to go before the Lord with some prayer requests. Amen? It's a new year. And there's nothing wrong with going before the Lord. Amen? Prayer requests we have here, it says... Pray for the Via family Amen. and for the part of family. Amen. And to please pray for us to understand everything. And for the families to, to reach out to God and for God to give us strength. That's from Sister Nancy. Amen. Pastor Johnny also wants to pray for the Via family Amen. for healing. God is going to do something. God is going to do something with that family. Amen. Let's pray for that. If for all the marriages uh, to uh, for mature, for mature love, is that what it is? And to glow in and to grow in the heart of all people. Sister Jim and uh, sister uh, brother Jim and sister Audrey. Let's pray for the brother Juan. For brother Juan, he's sick and he's healing in his body. Amen. Tony. Once prayer for granny and grandpa, grandpa and granny, for her puppies, amen. Want to pray for her family and all her friends and all, all the friends for everyone here. Happy New Year, she says, amen. We also like to pray for everyone uh, that needs your love. And it's not too much to ask. I like to pray for me. For God, God knows the pain and the stress I pray for. He helps me to take a little bit off. Please. Amen. Brother Gary wants to pray for the new year. Wants to thank the Lord for the new year. And the new beginnings. Uh, leave the past behind and pray for Diane's salvation. Amen. Pastor Phil wants to pray for uh, his wife, uh, Sister Didi and Yvonne, who are feeling sick. Uh, Rita, Rita Luna and family. Who are sick also. Uh, for Sean, not feeling well. He's sick at home. Michelle Minamontes is sick at home. Pastor Pep and Terry Lopez uh, recovering from COVID. Amen. Also from Facebook, Brother uh, Mario wants to pray for his wife and grandson, Nicholas, for healing. How many believe God is good? God is good. I got a praise report. Terry's mom. She's walking. Woo. No, listen, listen. She's walking. She's this close to coming home. Listen to this, church. Listen to this. She was set to go into hospital. They, they act, the family actually talked to her because the doctor's report, because of the way she was responding, she was set to go into hospital. You know what happens, right, when you go there. And the mom says it, right, Terry? Mom said this. Give me a couple more days. Give me a few more days. If that, no changes, do what you have to do. Everything changed. Everything changed. She started responding. She started talking. She started, I, think, I believe her sister went to visit her and she was walking around the halls. God is good, church. God is good. She's just close to coming home. We thought she was coming home from New Year's, but you know, God knows better. We serve a good God, church. God is a healer. If you put your faith into it, when God touched people, he says, your faith heal you. Let it be your faith, church. Listen, let's start this new year right. Those of you that are sick in body, come forward. Come forward. Let's pray for you. Let us pray for you, man. Those pastors, can you help us? And Let's pray. Those are you second body. Let's start this new year right. Let's punch the enemy in the eye. Let's give the enemy a black eye. 
We serve a good God, church. We serve a God that heals. We serve an awesome, awesome, awesome God. Father, we come before the Lord. We're thanking you for being the God that you are, Father. Father, we stand with his brothers and sisters right now, Lord God. Praying, Father God, that you touch their hearts, Lord God. Father, we believe, Lord God, that their faith, their faith, Lord God, their faith, Lord God, their faith, Father, their faith is going to heal them, Lord. Their faith is going to touch them, Lord God. Their faith is going to heal their body, Lord God. Father, we believe because of you, Lord God, because of the faith they have in their heart, Lord God. You are going to heal them, Lord God. You are going to heal them, Lord God, because of the Lord that you are, Lord God. Your faith, your faith is going to heal you. Your faith is going to heal you. Father God, we just thank you, Father God, for being real in our lives, Father. Father, we thank you, Father God, for being real in our lives. Your faith is going to heal you. Your faith is going to heal you. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this new year that you set before us, Lord. And we pray, Lord God, that we see nothing but victories this year, Lord God. To testify your goodness, Lord God. To understand that we do serve a good God, Lord God. Let those that don't know you see that you are a good God in our lives, Father God. Father, we pray for this morning, Lord God. As we start this new year, Lord God, let this message come forward, Lord God, with power and strength, Lord God. Fill our hearts, Lord God, and move in our lives. We give you praise, we give you glory, in Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Wave at somebody. Tell somebody good morning as you're sitting as you're sitting down there. Hallelujah. Pastor Johnny's gonna come up. He's got a few things to share. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Another pastor in training. Come on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Give the Lord a big clap offering this morning. Come on. Amen. Clap it like you mean it. Come on. Amen. Praise God. How many know God is so wonderful? Come on. Amen. He is a great God, a, a gracious God, a loving God, a caring God. Amen. Uh, he is just so awesome for, in all his ways. Uh, you know, we want to welcome you all here this morning to Praise Chapel Almani, amen, and those that are on Facebook and, and all the other um, internet uh, uh, apps. Uh, we welcome you this morning. Praise the Lord. We miss you. If you're out there sick, amen, we're praying for you. We're believing God that you'll be here with us soon, amen, because we know that the Bible says that Jesus is the great physician. And I'll tell you what, if you, if you believe the word of God, you've got to stand upon that word. You've got to declare that word, amen. You've got to live that word, amen. But you also got to use a little wisdom involved with that, but praise the Lord. So we're going to believe God just for healings and for those of you that are not here, that you could be with us soon in Jesus' name, amen. You know, we're starting a new year. Um, I was talking with uh, Pastor Alfonso back there, and I was driving yesterday, going to pick up my daughter, and um, I was by myself in the truck, and I'm driving out there to pick her up, and um, I thought, man, it seems like everything's the same. You know, I, I started thinking back how before, man, you know, I, I would think, oh, a New Year, a, excitement, or New Year's Eve, oh, man, excitement, you know, and uh, or the weekend coming, excitement, party time, you know, and um, I was driving just thinking, man, everything seems the same. And, um, you know, like, Spirit of God just started speaking to me a little bit and telling me, you know what, there, because there has to be a difference in our life, church. You know, Daniel, in the book, uh, in the book of Daniel, Daniel makes the statement, amen, that he purposed in his heart not to def defile himself, amen, with the king's delicacies. And how many know that as we enter this new year, amen, we, we, I, I know that as God was speaking to me and driving, uh, I'm thinking, you know what, uh, I need to declare this year, amen, is going to be a different year because it's going to be a, a year of greater maturity as God gives me more breath to serve him. Come on, amen. Because we could talk about our first love, we could talk about the excitement that used to be, but what about what's going to be, amen, what God's going to give us? You know, even as a church and as a family, I want to believe, amen, that God, he desires open doors. We need to have the heart to walk through them by faith, amen, and to be who God has called us to be. Can I get an amen this morning? So praise God. With that being said, amen, I just want to go over a, a couple of announcements. 
Uh, first of all, before I forget, this little paper here with the yearly candle, uh, candle, <laughs> calendar, um, you can pick it up in the back as you leave this morning, amen, that gives you all the dates for all the ladies' men's breakfasts, for the harvesters and uh, uh, everything that's going on this year, uh, as, so you can have that. But um, this coming uh, Wednesday, we do have uh, Wednesday service, amen, starting at 7 o'clock. Um, you get here early, you can go to the prayer room. But also this Wednesday, um, uh, for the women, on the book reading is going to start on the 31st of the month, but this Wednesday... Mona will be letting the ladies know uh, what book you're going to be reading and the cost of that book and all the information. And for the brothers, Pastor Phil will be uh, putting out that information soon. Amen. But the same uh, date we're shooting for Monday the 31st in your calendars to resume the book reading. Come on. Amen. You know, I, I told um, the pastor's group and the leader's group that we've been meeting, um, one of the things that I... I really have noticed that so many years now have passed through with this uh, book reading that it's made a big difference in the lives of the men and women in the church because it's re really been um, a very solid, solid group of individuals that have been coming. And how many know longevity in your maturity and growing Christ is something not to uh, take lightly. Because that's that longevity, amen, and it's that steadiness in that willingness to grow that God can bless. Come on, amen. Because anybody could do anything every, anything for a short period of time. Come on, amen. It's easy to do it for a short period of time, but it's when you have that heart, you say, you know what, I'm in this for the long run. Amen. I'm in this, and I ain't giving up. I'm in this, and I'm going to stay. So all that information for the book reading will be coming out uh, this Wednesday and, and shortly for the brothers, amen, on what books you're going to be reading this this year so we got wednesday service amen we got saturday uh, uh prayer at eight o'clock uh, once again want to encourage you for that and on friday evenings amen this coming week also we're going to start bible studies once again i've been a couple weeks without them how many missed the bible studies oh come on if you're raising your hand that means you're probably not going to one amen so uh, i want to encourage you come on amen to uh, to get line up with a bible study if you're not sure what Bible study to go to? Come and speak with me, amen, and we'll get you uh, connected to one of the Bible studies. They're all, they're all good, amen. There ain't one better than the other, amen, but sometimes you just fit in the crowd a little bit better. So um, we're going to just, if you're not going to Bible study, have something, a new desire in your heart. Again, Daniel said he, he purposed in his heart. That means he resolved, amen, he made a declaration. He said, you know what, I ain't going to let the world crowd out. God, amen. I ain't going to let the king, amen. I ain't going to let the scientist. I ain't going to let the educator. I ain't going to let my wife. I ain't going to let my husband. Come on, amen. I ain't going to let my job. I'm going to resolve that I'm going to serve God, that I'm going to put him first. We're going in and started, not going in. We are in a new year. My wife were talking yesterday, amen. Remember when we were in the old church in the year 2000, the new century was coming around. Everybody was all scared, amen. Uh, yeah, Y2K, computers were going to go out, lights were going to turn off, there wasn't going to be no food, there wasn't going to be no that. 22 years later, amen, we're still here because God is the one that's in control, church. Come on, amen. Give the Lord a clap off for this morning because God is in control, amen. Oh, ladies' breakfast, look at the calendar, amen. Man, that's bad pastor, bad pastor. Ladies' breakfast. Oh, this is coming Saturday, uh, January. Ladies' breakfast. Come on, amen. Um, it's going to be hosted by Mariloma, correct? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Almani, ladies, you get off the hook. This first, first uh, um, ladies' breakfast, you get to come in and get served. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a clap offering as Pastor Phil comes on up. I don't know what happened. Lost my mustache somewhere. But I'd let you guys know that. I know some of you that may not realize this, it's something funny about that guy. It's been over 20 years since I got rid of it. And uh, it was a tough one the last time I did it. My, my girls wouldn't even come around me. I think they love the mustache more than me. It's kind of a tough one to handle, you know. But, you know, as I get a little older, some of you may not understand this, but as you get a little older, you start looking a little different. Yeah, you, and as I look a little different, I, lately in my 60s now, uh, every now and then somebody will mention, hey, you look like uh, 
So you, you look like an old gangster. And I said, no, 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 no. The vato loco thing, no, 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 no. And, and so I said, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the caterpillar. So this is the new me. This is the new me. I know it looks funny. Some of you are looking at my lip. You're going, dang, that lip. Tell them to cover it. Tell them to cover it. No, you got to get used to it. One thing I did realize when I took it off is I looked like my dad. I said, oh, my gosh, man. I looked in the mirror, and I said, whew, I haven't seen him in a while. <laughs> got to get used to it, you know. So do you, because I don't really have to look at it much. But you all do. You glad you're here this morning? Yeah. Those of you watching on Facebook and uh, Instagram, you're watching us live. We're glad that you're joining us. We're glad you're here. As you heard Pastor Johnny mention all those things, we got a good lineup for this, this coming beginning of the new year. I'm right back here. And uh, we're excited. I'm excited. We're excited. I know the ladies are going to be doing a, a, a book that's going to be inspiring. And I'm still working on a couple of decisions because I'm also, we're also meeting with the uh, Bible study leaders uh, uniquely over the last couple of weeks. We got a couple of more meetings, and we're praying that this year that, that we see some health in people's lives. Now, let me tell you how you can tell when people are healthy. When people are healthy, there's growth in their life. And I don't, I don't mean that kind of growth, okay? But when you're healthy, there's growth. And the church is like, or shall I say, in likeness, it's the same. Because we are the body of God. Yes, we are the body of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. And so as the bride of Christ and as the body of Christ, we need to be healthy. And when we are healthy, we grow. Because healthy things grow. Hey, you got that. You've been reading the banner that's inside the fellowship hall. If you have a plant or a, you, you, you put a plant in the ground like a, a rose bush and if you keep it healthy, it will, it will grow. And the church is the same way. Now, I know it's been a struggle for every church over the last two years because this COVID thing. But this COVID thing is coming to an end. This, this, this is a, a flu season. And most of you remember, we have always had people get the flu. All, some people that are sick aren't sick with COVID. They got the flu. And so what we need to realize is that we've got to start shaking off some of that fear that is still lingering. And we've got to deal with it because I believe with all my heart God wants his bride to grow. There are people who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And your life and your words and your testimony is the very thing that God wants to use to bring them closer to him. I want you to think about that as we step, as we already are in, as we have stepped into this new year. Because in the goodness of God, we are thankful for the way he moves. And when he uses your life to touch other people's life, there's nothing greater. There is no greater other than laying hands on somebody and seeing a miracle take place like blind eyes open deaf ears open, lame standing to walk, or the dead rising out of the coffin. When you bring someone to the Lord and you help them grow, you've done every one of those. You've allowed the Holy Spirit to bring freedom and liberty and deliverance to a life. You all remember when you gave your life to Christ? Some of you here, you've been saved for a long time. Don't ever forget Amen. how Jesus set you free. Don't ever forget the day, the place, how and where he touched your life the first time. Because that's, that's a mark in your heart to never lose that fact. I remember what Jesus did to bring me to himself. And it is so valuable, I'm going to keep focus on him doing more than that in my life. Can you say amen? So after this message this morning, I'm going to be preaching a message that God put on my heart, and we're going to be praying for our Bible study leaders. I know not all of them are here. Even our pastors are not here. They're still recovering. But um, I, it's been really tough because every time we plan something, things start happening again, and we postpone it, and it really messes things up. So we're going to pray for those that are here and those that are here this morning and the ones that aren't. We'll just, we'll just send a prayer out their way because I want to see those ministries grow. As those ministries grow, our church will grow. You can get people to visit a small group in somebody's house, a Bible study where you can ask questions, share, have coffee and fellowship and get to know each other a lot quicker most of the time than getting somebody to come to church. 
And that's one of the goals that we have. It's part of our DNA. Let me read you something out of the, out of the book of Luke. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to the book of Luke. I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. Let me finish this up here. I almost forgot about giving. Don't want to do that, huh? Because right now I'm talking about giving. We are in a new year. Last year is gone. It's over. Say it's over. over. It's history. Hasta la vista. Bye-bye. It's not coming back. However you might have missed the mark last year, done. Well, I'm going to make up for it. Don't try that in the kingdom of God. What you should do is put it under the blood and say, Jesus, things got messed up. My life, my finances, my situation got messed up. But thank God for a new year. And here I am. Say, here I am. So, so Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he gave them a parable because they were talking about stewardship. Now, he told them a parable of, of what's called the unrighteous steward. A steward is a manager. Everybody know what a manager is? You might have one on your job, almost like a supervisor. They oversee everything. Well, the Bible says we are stewards. We are stewards of everything God has put in our hands. If you're married, God has put a marriage in your hand. If you have children, God has put a children in your hand, married or not. If you have responsibilities, you are a steward over those responsibilities. If you work a job and you answer to somebody, you are a steward over the kind of work that they have given you and the talent that you have. If you're a construction worker and, and uh, you build houses, you are a steward over the lumber that you're building. And how you, if you make wrong cuts, you spend money that you shouldn't spend. You have to do things. You have to learn how to... Uh, get yourself capable of doing things right. Can somebody say amen? So the Bible says everything we have, we are a steward over. We are managers over. Even our finances. And Jesus said, however you handle your finance tells me where your heart is. So Jesus said there was a man. He was a rich man. He had a manager who was managing all of his stuff, but he got word that his manager was squandering his goods. He was stealing. He was stealing. And so he got word to him and he said, look, you got to give an account. I want you to give an account over the last year of what you've been doing and where the money's been going. And I'm going to meet you the next day and you're going to give an account or maybe the next week. And you're going to let me know all this stuff. And he knew he was going to lose his place. And so Jesus said, he thought in himself, what am I going to do? I, 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 can't, I, can't, go, I can't go out and work. I can't. Man, if, if I'm going to lose this job, i got to do something. And so the Bible says, as Jesus told us this story, he said, this parable, he says, I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do. I'm going to call all, all the men, all the people who owe my boss money. And he called them on the phone and he said, how many bundles of wheat do you owe my master? And they said, man, I owe my like, you know, I'm going to paraphrase it because I'm not looking at it word for word. He said, I owe him something like 80 bushels of wheat. And he says, cut it in half. Cut it in half and bring half and your debt is paid. He called another man and said, how much, how much oil do you owe? Man, I, I owe him like three barrels of oil. He said, look it, cut it in half. Bring me a barrel and a half and we'll call it even. And he started doing this as fast as he could because he knew he was going to lose his job. He'd been squandering money. How many know that still happens today? Yeah. And people lose their job because they handle money wrongly that doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the company they work for, or the business that they do. And we can all also do the same thing because everything God puts in our hands, we have to answer for. Every, every amount of money that comes into my house, I answer for. And I answer to it like if God has sent it. I don't care if Chewy, the old man across the street, brought it over to bless me. I answer for it. And so when Jesus seen, told, when he tells the story to the disciples and those around, he said when the master came and, and realized what he had did shrewdly, he commended him. He said, man, you know, you're, you're, you're going to lose your job and you are fired and you know you're going. But you know what? You're pretty slick and you're pretty smart because now you gave yourself favor to those that have to let you in when you leave this position and you go to work somewhere else. And then Jesus said this to his disciples. He says, 
If you're faithful in the very little things, you also should be faithful in much. Can somebody say amen? amen. And he who is unrighteous in the very little things is also unrighteous in much. Therefore, in verse 11 of chapter 16, if you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous wealth, which is wealth that comes in, who will entrust you true riches? If you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? And then he said, no one can serve two masters. You're either going to hate one and love the other, or else you're going to be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And what you do with your money testifies where your heart is. If this is a new year for you, congratulations. Thank God that he gives us the ability to do over, to start a right and to get right. Can you say amen? amen? Gentlemen, come on down, would you? Let's stand to our feet if you could across this building here. Take an envelope in front of you and fill it out as you probably already have. 80% of our church give online on the website. Those of you that are watching from Facebook, you can give very easily from your phone. All you got to do on your phone is dial area code 650 985 That's 650-900-8559. Text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E. It'll take you right in. Follow all those instructions and you'll be fine. You can give on our tithe... Um, on our app, we have a Praise Chapel of Almani app. You can give. It's on a Tithely app, and all you have to do is fill out your information, put your card on there, and you can give one time, or you can be a regular giver. If you're a regular giver, those of you watching us on Facebook, we thank you, because that's honoring God without even having to worry about the situation. I know what I make. I know what I give to the Lord. I'm going to put it down on a regular basis, and God will do it. I, I, over the years, there's times that I've been asked by the bank and said, you know, uh, is your church small? I said, no, not really. I said, but people have had to learn no longer writing checks and giving cash. I mean, there's still people who do, but we're all learning. Can you say amen? Yes. We're all learning. EBT card, those people never knew, but if you have one, you're learning. You've got to do differently with them. You've got to learn how to handle them differently. Hallelujah. So whatever you need, we will help you. If you need some guidance through that, you can call our office and our office will help you, 626-452-1673. We'll do our best to help you. Do your best this year to honor God. That's all you got to do. Somebody say amen. amen. Just honor the Lord with your finances and make sure he gets his first fruits. Right. Bow your heads with me all across this building. And let's just lift this up to the Lord Jesus. Brother Oscar, right here in front, would you ask God's prayer? Father, yes. at 10 till so let me invite you if you can this morning to open your bibles to the book of psalms chapter 62 and just kind of hold it and mark it if you can and then go over to the book of acts in the new testament etchos acts chapter 6 get get your uh self together there and let me know if you've got it i'm going to be reading out of the new american standard uh, you can read out of any translation that you might have. <clears throat> We're going to be praying for our Bible study leaders, our small group leaders. Um, we were going to try and do all the ministries, Sunday schools and stuff, but again, there are people that are sick, and so we'll, we'll do our best as the next couple of weeks come, and we want to pray for the ones who work with our children, because children will be back as soon as parents get rid of their fear and stuff. Children will come back, and and, and it'll, uh, we'll be able to work it out. It just takes time. We would hope that it would happen a little quicker, but we're not in control of all those things. And God knows. God knows. Acts chapter 6. This is a portion of scripture in the book of Acts where a problem, everybody say a problem. A problem existed in the church, in the gathering of God's people. It says, now at this time, verse number 1, 
while the disciples were increasing in number, in other words, people are getting saved, a complaint arose. Oh, my gosh. Complaints. Oh, never. Who would have thought? Lots of them, church. Lots of them. There was a lot of catastrophic issues and bomb outs and fallouts in the Bible. When you read them, you should realize there's hope for me. Because if they made it, I can make it. Look at somebody say, I can make it. And now tell them you can make it too. So there was a complaint that arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews because of their widows and they were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. Now let me clarify something here. There were a lot of people coming to Christ and they were from different cultures. Some of them were Jews, but they were raised in Greek, Grecian areas and they knew two languages a little different than others. It's kind of like going into different parts of, uh, of a foreign country where, you know, the, the language barrier. And they had this struggle and there were Hellenistics, there were Greeks, uh, there were um, native Hebrews and the language made it difficult to communicate. Anybody know about that? Especially those of you Latinos that don't know Spanish. Right? You call us pochos. Well, I can speak Spanish a little bit, but that term means we're, we're of the Latino culture, but we don't know the language. And that's kind of what was taking place here. So a problem arise. Same problem that we have when you somebody comes into your job or you walk into a place and there's a communication breakdown. So the 12 disciples summoned, verse number 2, the congregation of the other disciples, and they said, it's not desirable for us to neglect the word of God. That was important. Can you say amen? amen? God's word to be ministered to everybody, to feed everybody, for everybody to grow. That was important. So he said, it's not good for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve at tables. Now, this doesn't mean uh, chicken, rice, bread. A lot of times what it means is the stewardship of possibly the finances. The finances that was distributed to people to help other families, because that's what they did. Before there was a salvation army, there was the church. Before there was welfare, there was the church. Before the government ever did anything to help people who were poor or downtrodden or in trouble, guess what helped? The church. One of the reasons why churches struggle so much to help nowadays is because the government does it. Why did that take place? Because as our culture changed, less people went to church. And so the government felt like the church can't do it all because there's a lot of people that don't go to church. And then our government stepped in many, many years ago and started helping the poor and giving out to the needy. Before that, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years back, and for a thousand years and a couple thousand years, it's always been God's people who helped those who were down and out. Church should still do that. Should still do that. Can somebody say amen? All right, so when they talk about the tables, it could be very possibly, most theologians say it was about the gathering of money and how they spent that finance and how they used that finance. It was getting to be difficult and it took a lot of time. Therefore, say therefore, therefore. verse number three, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. This statement found approval with the whole congregation. Isn't it great when the whole church says, amen? amen. Isn't it awesome? I love it when the whole church says, amen. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a God idea. Let's do that. And so they chose Stephan, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Philip, which is a good name. It's missing an L, though. Mine has two L's. Prochorus, Nicanor, or Nicanor, depending how you... Uh, uh, how you pronounce that, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas. Nicholas was a proselyte from Antioch. In other words, he wasn't even Jewish. But he came to Christ because that's what God was doing. He was bringing salvation to all of the lost. And these they brought before the apostles, 
And after praying, they laid their hands on them. Verse 7 says the word of God kept spreading. Who was spreading the word? Did anybody know? Who was spreading the word? The church. The church. The disciples were involved, but the people were spreading the word, just like you and I are called to do. Pastors and leaders, but we are the church. You should be spreading the news through your family and through your friends. Can somebody say amen? Amen. This is why we're going to focus tonight on praying for our small groups. Because our small groups reach out to people in their areas. The greatest blessing you could ever have is to have a small group go into your house. Pray for your house. Over your rooms and your kids' rooms or whatever it might be. And lay hands on the doorposts and the window. Take some oil and anoint it and say, this home belongs to the Lord. This home is dedicated to God. Can somebody say amen? So what I want to do this morning is I want to talk about devotion and being devoted to God. This is a new year. And one of the things that you do in a new year is you take a good evaluation of how things have been in your life. If you, if you haven't taken an evaluation, usually it's because you're, I'm not really crazy about what I'm going to discover or what I'm going to see or what I'm going to think. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with feeling that way, but it's wrong if you don't do something about it. It's wrong if you leave something alone that needs to be fixed. Oof, no amens on that one, huh? Crickets. Did you hear that? It was crickets, man. I haven't heard crickets like that. Ooh, you're going to make a pastor drink. He hasn't even started here yet. Mmm. My, 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 my. I want to talk about devoted to God and being devoted to God. When you're saved, how how many are saved in this place? You gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Can you say amen? Amen. Being saved and having our faith planted in the Lord Jesus Christ. We do a couple of things that are are a little bit unique. Let me hold this because I'm going to have to move back and forth a little bit. But we do things that are, are, we we express ourselves. When something happens in your life that's good, you, you express it. You express it to others. You share it with others. And you let people know that it's something that you like, that you enjoyed, that you're glad it happened, right? So having been saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we express our love, we express our gratitude, we do it through devotion. Everybody say devotion. Okay. We do it through devotion to Him. Devotion to God, devotion to the Lord Jesus Christ, to to the three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can the church say amen? We we get into the Word of God. We read the Bible. We, We try to get ourselves on a regular basis of studying God's Word. We pray. We need to pray. We need to talk to God just like we talk to each other, just like we talk to a friend. Can you say amen? If you have a friend that you're really close with, that you can spill your guts with, and and, and you can vent. How many know what venting is? Venting is when you let out all your anger. If you have a friend that you can do that with, but you don't do it with God, you're not a friend of God. Because when you're a friend of God, God wants to hear your venting. God has no problems with your complaints. Guess what? He already knows you've got them. He knows what you've been thinking without saying anything. So if you'll just let him, say let him. If you'll let him and let him in and connect yourself with him, with, not with him, with him, he'll make changes in your life. Prayer, studying God's word, they are essentials. Everybody say essentials. Now you've heard that word. We've heard that over the last, you know, couple of years because of the COVID thing and crisis that have happened there are people that are they're essential workers they are they're the workers that are the most important they're they're involved in things and and essential means that it's necessary to make the whole complete you've got to have it it's an essential thing and you've got to have it if you're going to play football it's essential you got a football with you right if you're going to play baseball it's essential that you bring a bat a ball and maybe a glove unless your hands are really really tough There are certain things that are essential. That word essential means they are important. And and in our life, you would say it this way. They're an important part of our daily lives. 
food is essential. Water and drinking water is essential. We must have it. Can you say amen? We must have it. Let's read Psalm 62, if you can. Psalm 62. I had everything marked, and then it, it all drifted away. And so instead of fretting over it, just what the heck. I'm going to read a couple of verses. Let me see. Uh, man, you know what? Let's, let's go down to the 10th verse. We're going to start at the beginning. I want, you, I want you to hear David. I want you to listen to David talking about his heart and his life being devoted to God. My soul waits in silence for God only. For him, from him, is my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. You know what a stronghold is? That's where you run for protection. My stronghold, I shall not be greatly shaken. How long, verse 3, how long will you assail a man that you may murder him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a tottering fence? They have counseled only to thrust him down from his high position. They delight in falsehoods. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. Verse 5, my soul wait in silence for God only. For my hope is from him. He is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be shaken. On, my, on God my salvation and my glory rests. Whew, man, this is David putting it all on God. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust him. In him at all times, oh, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Say for us. Men of low degree are only vanity, and men of rank are a lie. In the balance, they go up, and they are altogether lighter than breath. Do not trust in oppression, and do not vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Imagine that David said, and even if you get successful and riches increase to your life, don't set your heart upon them. Would you bow your heads with me? Brother Stephen uh, Zuniga, would you stand and would you pray over this message this morning for me? Mighty God. Yes, yes, yes. So this message is going to be a little bit different. I do have notes. And you can get the notes even off of Facebook. Brother Will usually places them up there. But I'm going to bring you some truths. I'm going to talk about three things, not long, actually. But I'm going to talk, talk about three things that are very important. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you what I learned a long time ago is an is a irrefutable, irrefutable truth. Irrefutable means you can't argue with it. You can, you can try to prove it wrong, but you'll waste your time because it's a truth. Not only is it biblical... But it's true in life. Now, I want you to listen to what I'm going to tell you. It is, it, is not, it is not possible to love someone or to love something and not devote or commit your life to that very thing. It's not possible. You can't love something and not commit your life to it. You can't. It's impossible. Whatever you love, you'll commit your life to. Whatever you desire that's in your heart, that you, that, you, that you 
hunger for, you're going to commit your life to it. You may not do it immediately. You may try to do it slowly. You may try to do it casually, but you can't. It is not possible to love somebody or to love something and then not devote or not commit your life to that very thing. Nor can you be truly grateful for something without the desire inside of you to demonstrate that gratefulness and do something to show how grateful you are. Those, that's a truth that you can't argue with. This is why, this is why, if you want to know what's really going on in someone's life, just look at how they're living. Because how you live demonstrates where your hungers are. If you love God, you're going to do everything you can to follow Him. If you have a desire in your heart to love the Lord Jesus Christ for all that He did, for dying on the cross for our salvation, for all those things, for forgiving us of all our sins, for taking my sin to the cross of Calvary and washing my life that I didn't deserve, but by a prayer of saying, Lord, be my Savior. He cleans the slate, and he makes me his. You can't be grateful for something without the desire to demonstrate that gratefulness. If you're, if you're grateful for what God has done in your life, you're going to do something about that. You're going to demonstrate it. Your life is going to show it. You're going you're to act it out in the direction that your life is going in, in the things that you do, in the words that you say, and the actions that you are involved in. So... In addition to that, our commitment to the Lord gets revealed by what's really in our hearts. This is why Jesus said, wherever your heart is. Now, again, let me clarify it. When, when Jesus, when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's not talking about the muscle that's here. This muscle is just as weak as our flesh. Okay? What he's talking about is where your conscience is. So literally, you would, you would actually think that when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's talking about something up here. Because this is where you think. This is where your conscience is. This is where I'm guilty or not guilty. This is, this is where, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, come, how come you chose guilty or not guilty? Because I've been there and I've done that, okay? Right here. And so wherever your conscience is, your conscience is what tells you, no, that's wrong. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that anymore. That's your conscience working. If there's something in your life before and you've, Catch yourself thinking and your conscience is, no, nah, no, nah, that's not you anymore. That's where your heart is. And that's how your heart works. So in, in addition to these things what I, that I had mentioned about our devotion to God and whether you truly love something, our commitment to the Lord is going to be revealed by three things. And again, these are three things I'm going to go through so that you get them. Not deep. I'm not going to get deep because it would take forever. It would take months to really focus on these. But I want you to see them. I want to see number one, and, and I think Brother Will has them. Number one, I want to talk about a passion to obey. Number two, a spirit of humility. Amen. And number three, a servant's heart. Everybody hear that? A servant's heart. Let's look at the first one, obedience. Okay? Obedience, a passion to obey. David, in the Old Testament, King David, the man who wrote the majority,